Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is, as I told, the whole chapter will be discussing on adsorption, right? As I told, adsorption is nothing but surface phenomena. So in this case, the surface particles of adsorb, adsorb, in fact, the particles are adsorbed on the surface. This is surface phenomena, right? The particles are adsorbed on the surface. The question is why? What is so special about the surface? If you see here, the gas particles are adsorbed on the surface. This is a charcoal and the gas particles are adsorbed on the charcoal surface. So the question is, what is so special about this surface? Right? So if you see, if this is my surface particle and if this is my bulk particle, so this is my bulk, and this particular layer is my surface. Right? So if you see this is my surface particle and this is my bulk particle, if you see they are not in the same environment. So if you see this surface particle will be pulled something like this. Only this much. But if you talk about this bulk particle, it will be pulled something like this. Correct? So typically if you talk about three dimensional space, this is half sphere. Right? Don't think it is a circle, it's a half sphere actually, right? And this is a one full sphere, one full sphere. So if you see in this bulk, all the force acting between the particles are mutually balanced, right? This is mutually balanced. Correct. But in this case, if you see, this is my particle, right? But they are not surrounded by atoms and molecules on the same side equally. There's an unbalanced force of attraction. You see, there's an unbalanced force of attraction. And this unbalanced force is unbalanced. So this unbalanced force is responsible for adsorption. Correct. So we have seen so many examples of adsorption. The reason why adsorption happens is we see a particle on the surface and we see a particle on the bulk. On the bulk, the particle which we have, the, the force acting on it is mutually balanced. But the, the particle on the bulk, the force acting on it is not mutually balanced. There's an unbalanced force on this particle on the surface. Any particle on the surface if you take, it will have unbalanced force. And this unbalanced force is responsible for adsorption. Correct? And please note, as I've told once again, the adsorption depends on the surface area. Why? If you see, if I have this much surface area, I can have these many particles which are responsible for adsorption. If I increase the surface area, the same amount of water, if I put in this big uh, beaker, which has a huge bigger surface area, right? Obviously, the volume of water will go down. It will be somewhere here. It will have more adsorption. Why? Because the surface area is increased. Correct. So the adsorption is totally dependent on surface area. It's totally in, in fact, it's directly proportional to the surface area. And adsorption is inversely proportional to temperature. We'll see this. Adsorption is inversely proportional to temperature. And that's why when you heat this charcoal, the gas goes off. Right? And it become deabsorbed, dissolved actually, right? So we'll see this in the next slides, next few slides. Why? and how the adsorption is inversely proportional to temperatures. Please note, adsorption is directly proportional to surface area and it is inversely proportional to temperature. So before we understand how it is inversely proportional to temperature, let's understand this formula once again. This is a very common formula. We have seen this formula a couple of times. Delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So here delta G is what? Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy. Correct. Delta H is what? Enthalpy. And T is what? My temperature in Kelvin. Temp in Kelvin. And delta S is my 
इंट्रॉपी चाहिए करेक्ट नाउ दिस विल टेल वेदर द रिएक्शन इज स्पॉन्टेनियस और नॉट स्पॉन्टेनियस और नॉट हु विल टेल डेल्टा जी विल टेल इफ डेल्टा जी इज लेस देन जीरो देन इट इज स्पॉन्टेनियस राइट दैट मीन्स रिएक्शन विल ऑकर और नॉट इज समथिंग विच यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड बाय डेल्टा जी दिस डेल्टा एच इज इंथेल्पी it will tell you whether you need heat for the reaction or heat will be liberated from the reaction right if delta h is less than 0 i tell it is exothermic reaction that means it will give out heat right so the h you see h is nothing but heat also the the letter matches so delta h will only tell you whether heat will be liberated or you have to provide heat correct entropy in change nothing but my randomness of my system randomness randomness of the system right whether it is uh, the particles the molecules are allowed to move more or they are restricted the particle movement is restricted or they are allowed to move that is my entropy right the more is the movement the more is the entropy this is the formula we know right delta g will actually tell you whether the reaction happens or not delta h will only tell you whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic that is the heat is liberated or heat is required t is my temperature in kelvin and delta s will tell you the entropy change now let's talk about the heat of adsorption the question is where during adsorption heat is evolved or heat is required that is delta h is greater than 0 or delta h is less than 0 correct so in this case heat is evolved here heat is required so let's see the adsorption process is endothermic or exothermic right so if you see in during adsorption what happens on these surfaces small small molecules get adsorbed correct so if you see what happens is there is a decrease in residual force there is a decrease in residual force on the surface correct because on this since the particles are getting adsorbed so there is a decrease in the residual force force on the surface that means there is a decrease in surface energy that is decrease in surface energy se if there is a decrease in surface energy it has to come out somewhere so it will be this decrease in surface energy appears as heat appears as heat correct and thus i can say that adsorption process is exothermic that is delta h is less than 0 correct so adsorption is a exothermic process why because during adsorption the residual energy or the residual force on the surface is decreased that is there is a decrease in surface energy and this decrease in surface energy comes out as a heat so during adsorption delta h is less than 0 also we know that during adsorption what happens is the mo the movement of molecules is restricted because as a molecule here it could easily move around but because of the particles which has been accumulated on the surface the movement of the particles is restricted since the movement of the particle is restricted delta s is also less than 0 because the entropy of the system is going down correct entropy is nothing but the degree of randomness the so degree of randomness of the system is decreasing so entropy of system is going down also we have seen that delta h is less than 0 so equation now if you want to know whether for a given scenario right for a given scenario my reaction will happen or not whether adsorption will happen or not so what factor decide whether a reaction will happen or not that is delta g so delta g is nothing but delta h minus t delta s we have seen so this factor will decide whether adsorption or any reaction will happen or not correct so now delta h is negative if you see 
delta t delta s is also negative right so negative minus minus negative so it can have a positive value it can have a negative value also correct but for this reaction to happen this delta g has to be less than zero if delta g is less than zero i can say that delta h is less than t delta s so if this is the condition then i'll say that my adsorption will happen what is this this is the amount of energy liberated and this is the decrease in the randomness of the system so mathematically for this adsorption to happen delta g has to be less than zero and delta g is delta h minus t delta s and we have seen that delta h is negative and delta s is also negative so negative minus some negative quantity for example minus 3 minus 1 negative quantity will take 1 and second case will take a negative quantity minus uh, a quantity to be 5 so in this case minus 3 minus minus 1 it becomes how much it becomes minus 2 in this case minus 3 minus minus 5 that becomes plus 2 you see so since these two are negative this output that is delta h minus t delta s can be either positive or negative but we want only scenarios where the output is negative in that case only we will see that adsorption is happening and thus we see adsorption doesn't happen always right so scenarios where my delta h minus t delta s is negative there my adsorption happens correct now if you see if you see this uh, scenario here for adsorption to happen delta h if you see has to be less than t delta s correct now if you see if the reaction is proceeding reaction is proceeding what happens delta h value will decrease so delta h may, may be initially is minus 5 then it becomes minus 4 then it becomes minus 3 then it becomes minus 2 minus 1 like this why why delta h is decreasing because the amount of heat liberated by this reaction will decrease why see the amount of heat liberated will depend on the reactant so reactant gives product so over a period of time the reactant concentration will decrease so delta h will also decrease correct so at a point and this will be almost constant entropy of change system at a point will come where this point this value will become actually less correct example if you see let's assume value of t delta s to be minus 3 let's assume this value is minus 3 constant first case this is minus 5 delta h minus this value what is the value it comes out to be it comes out to be minus 2 then it becomes delta h becomes minus 4 let's suppose t delta s is constant this becomes minus 1 then it becomes minus 3 delta h it comes out to be 0 right so if it comes out to be 0 that means my reaction is this is all my delta g value reaction is non-spontaneous so for a period of time reaction becomes non-spontaneous and then equilibrium is reached and that is what we call equilibrium of adsorption what is happening is for a reaction to be spontaneous delta g has to be less than zero delta g is delta h minus t delta s so delta h value is not constant as the reaction proceeds this value decreases actually decreases in the uh, net amount i am saying right so early it was minus 5 then becomes minus 3 then becomes minus 2 then minus 1 and then it becomes 0 actually in the delta h similarly t delta s is almost constant right because this reaction is happening in a constant temperature this is a constant and entropy change is also almost constant so if you assume this has this to be minus 3 just to show this our earlier the value of delta h was minus 5 delta g came out to be minus 2 that is spontaneous again we made uh, delta h as minus 4 delta g came out to be minus 1 that is spontaneous again we made delta g as minus 3 then we found that delta g, uh, delta h to be minus 3 and we found delta g came out to be 0 that becomes it becomes non-spontaneous this reaction won't happen and thus the react equilibrium is reached where ultimately delta h is almost equal to t delta s right so delta g is equal to 0 that means reaction has attained its this is all we have in heat of adsorption. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos.
attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.